Uh, I was busy until quite recently. Uh, the Dreamy School is now open and classes have started. Uh, I go to the school about four days a week to teach. After the one-day seminar on Thursday, I go to teach a night class, and I teach for about two hours. On Friday, I teach two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon. On Saturday, we walk together from 9 p.m. to 1 p.m. for four hours. I hike with the students for about 15 to 17 kilometers. We talk about all sorts of things. It's only been about a month since the school opened, but there have been a lot of changes already. If you remember back to when you were in school, we studied the material that adults had designed for us, but were those things that you learned practical? In most cases, you don't really use what you've learned. Most people actually don't make use of their majors in university. Uh, instead of forcing the students to compete with one another, in this school, we want the students to have time to think and to rest. We want them to be able to answer life's questions, such as, how does one live a good life? Uh, we don't really want the students to strive for worldly success. We don't want our students to think that life is just a game where you have to climb to the top. We want our students rather to humble themselves and to lower themselves. You can think of this school as a place that teaches mm, students to share rather than just to take more. So the name Dreamy School not only means to dream, but also means in Korean to give. That was how the name of the school came to be. Mm. There's also a Bible camp that is held in Cambodia. This is the third camp, and it's open once, both in the spring and the fall. In the first camp, there were 120 participants, and in the second camp, there were 250 participants. In the third camp, there were over 650 students. Some people predict that on the fourth camp in the fall, maybe more than 1,000 participants might show up. There's actually great opportunity for all of you to give to the poor children there. If you go there, you can see children running around without shoes. The children with sandals on are relatively better off. During the first camp, we brought many sneakers in for the children. I was able to witness children who had worn sneakers for the first times in their lives and jumping for joy. We will continue to do this kind of work in the future. We will continue to plant dreams into these children. 100 years ago, Korea was also a country that received a great deal of help from missionaries who had come from the US, Canada, and Australia. They came and built schools and hospitals to help Korea's development. We should feel privileged that we have become a country that can help other countries now. I think we need to act out this gratitude towards other countries. Uh, actually, our employees were very busy last week and the week before that because they moved to the newly opened Atomy headquarters. The name of the new headquarters is Atomy Park. On the first floor is an auditorium that can hold up to 1,500 people. This is a space for all the contractors. And a floor above that is the lobby floor. This lobby floor is also always open to all the members. There is a book cafe there as well. I had originally planned to use the fourth floor as my office, but I gave the Imperial Masters the best room on that floor. And the room for the Crown Club members is also located right beside it. If you get promoted to Crown Master or Imperial Master, you will be able to use these rooms that have just a great view. This is appropriate for a rank such as Imperial Master, right? Uh, 
The sofa in the Imperial Master room is even made of real leather. If you earn $100,000 a month, then you'll have that kind of furniture in your own homes. So I wanted them to be comfortable in the office as well. That's why we had to invest some money for the furniture. Their standards have just become too high now. Our company is trying our best to cater to everyone. This space, once again, is open for all of you to use. Make yourselves at home. Uh, a lot of emotions are hitting me after having built our new headquarters. When we first started our company, we were really poor. We were like beggars. Oh, we had written Atomy Headquarters on a piece of paper, uh, and we, we put it up on our door. We had a room about 100 square meters, and it even took us months just to get that office. When we first got that office, I was very emotional because our company didn't even have an office for the first few months. And beside the office was a storage room. In this space, there were about two or three employees. And that's how our company started. Um, actually, there was an incident that left a mark on my heart. At the time, a contractor had brought in one of his acquaintances. During that time, there were not a lot of people who could really explain about Hemohem. So I was the one who mostly explained about the products to other people. So this woman came in. But she looked at me with great reluctance and she asked, are you really the president? She must have thought, what kind of a dump of an office is this? And so she asked me, are you the president? I replied, yes, ma'am, I am. She said again, do you know what kind of company I work in? Our company's headquarters is in a tall building. There's a revolving door at the entrance. Wow, what kind of a place is this? And she walked out brushing the dust off her feet. Uh, I was actually not that mad that she had looked down on me like that. I kind of expected it. That's because our office deserved to be looked down on. But I felt so sorry for that contractor that had brought his acquaintance into our office. It's not easy to bring someone to us, is it? Though he brought his friend, our office was so run down, she left in disgust. I felt so sorry for that contractor at the time. I said, I am sorry, I am sorry. But he said, it's okay. That incident really left a mark on my heart. And only after having built this new headquarters have I really felt that pain alleviated that I had held for so long in my heart. Now, if you bring people to our headquarters in Gongju, it really doesn't matter who. No one will look down at our headquarters anymore. Yeah. Our company is all about absolute quality and absolute price, right? Should lots of money be invested in building the new headquarters or not? Of course not. I can't stand that kind of thinking. So, uh, for about a year and a half during the planning phase, uh, we tried to implement the principle that a building is a place to create space. It's nothing more and nothing less. So we didn't use unnecessary expensive materials. Instead, we focused on maximizing the utility of the space. The new headquarters is designed at a world-class level. Maybe even better than world-class. And at the same time, we lowered the cost to the minimum. That's how the new headquarters was designed and built. I can assure you, you'll be impressed when you come and see it. 